before we begin, this this is how cute the Maddie is. She sits on my desk and really needs a haircut. This video is a response to Dan Brown's latest video, uh, and so you should go watch that first because otherwise this is going to be very not cohesive. In Dan's video, he answered three different letters and talked about various things, and when I watched it, I was just in there, Dan, Dan, you, you, you missed some big points in there that, that you need to make. I don't necessarily disagree with anything you said, it's just more of you... You missed some major, major topics. First one. Our society still judges people on their tattoos when really it's no better than judging a person by skin color or gender. Stay awesome uh, from Zach. Well, not only is it no better than judging someone for their skin color. Judging people on their tattoos is not the equivalent of judging people on their skin color or gender. It just isn't. A tattoo is a choice somebody can make, uh, but skin color, gender, gender identity is not a choice. When you judge somebody on a choice they made, they have actively participated in, in your outlook. I now have long hair, and in the past when I've had long hair, I get asked for drugs, because people think I'm a druggie. And I know where people can get drugs. Uh, it's not true. I don't. So please don't ask. But it is a consequence of how I present myself. Tattoos are a more permanent version of long hair or style of clothes you wear. It's a little harder to change once you've gone down that road. We okay, a lot harder. But it is a choice you have made and you have to live with it. You may not like the bias that you that comes about by tattoos that you have. I'm a big fan of tattoos. I think they're awesome. But you've got to accept that some people will look at you differently if you have visible tattoos. It's just a fact that you need to consider before you get a tattoo. We read of people shooting up schools and then find out that they just played GTA 5. Was it the game's fault? Would love your view. Keep rocking those videos from Dwayne. What we have here, Dwayne, is a classic chicken and egg dynamic, right? Does our violent culture stem from our violent media? Or does our violent media stem from our culture of violence? Now, to any rational, neutral observer, uh, the answer is obviously the latter. But I don't think it's entirely wrong to draw at least a connection between the two. Violence in video games does not lead to violent crime. It just doesn't. And the best way to look at that is if you look at violent crime statistics since the 90s, they have been going down. Nearly every category across the board, violence is down as video games use has gone up. So there's actually an inverse correlation between the two. Well, this is a correlation and not provable causation. Anybody who says violent video games contributes to violence uh, needs to have some other cause for the decrease in violence since the 90s. If they do not have another thing that causes that in their calculations, then it is not true. Oh, Dan, you brought up some good stuff on the third letter. We were talking about neocons and their religious aspect of neocons. The thing is that neocons are not religious. The reason why neocons want to go to war is for money and no other reason. It's the oil in, in the Middle East. It's a military industrial comp complex that only makes profit if you actually use weapons. You know, you can only stockpile so many bullets before you have to use them so they could make more bullets to stockpile. Neocons take a lot of their philosophy from Ayn Rand and objectivism. Objectivism, bluntly, takes religion out of the conversation as it takes all social networks out of the conversation. It also takes out your responsibility to society. What you're left with? is money and profit. And what better way to make money than to produce something like a bullet that 
that has no purpose as part of society other than to destroy it. I'm gonna get a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I am expecting a lot of flack for this. I oversimplified the neocon and objectivism a bit just for this video. But it is the premise of, of Ayn Rand objectivism is that there is no society, no religion, no... Uh, you have no obligation to anybody else other than to help yourself. There is no religion that conforms with objectivism. Thank you for watching. If you like this, like, subscribe, comment, um, check out Dan's video, and, 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 and Maddie, Maddie, she, she needs a haircut badly. You're just gonna sit there? I'm not gonna say hi. Hi. I can't even see her eyes anymore. <laughs>